Lovely stuff. Outstanding. I'm back. Did you miss me? No. Loser. Get out of here. <sighs> Philistines. Anyway, apologies for my uh, my recent hiatus. Um, all of my stuff has either been broken, sent away, or broken and still here, and I just haven't really been inspired to make videos lately. But I did um, end up buying a little car. So I'm going to fix it up, get it back on the road, running up nicely, so that I have a little uh, Forby to go banging around in the bush in. And um, uh, ooh. I need to free up a little bit of money from my air rifle collection to do that. So, as the title suggests, I'm going to sell my FX Crown. But before I do, I need to know a few things about it. I want to know whether or not my um, tune is the same, um, primarily. Uh, I'm not 100% sure whether or not it has stayed the same. The temperature change might have changed it a little bit because uh, it's really hot now. It's um, winter basically just finished in Australia and like the next day it was like 35 degrees and it was like, Ugh. So yeah, the switch has been flipped. So it'll be interesting to see how it's performing and I want to be able to put that uh, in the actual ad on the website that I'm going to sell it on. So um, we'll uh, figure that out and then after that, uh, so we'll, we'll run that over the crony, probably throw 10 rounds over the crony just to see how it goes. And then I'm going to dial it all the way back down to minimum um, and then head down the back uh, of the property and zero it up uh, nice and close because with all that heat has come the, uh, the the great menace of the cane toad once again. They've all come out of hiding. So I'm going to go and uh, swat a whole bunch of them tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, that'll be our, our little farewell tour for the crown. So should be a good time. Stick around, check it out. Hope you enjoy it. So that's a little weird. Um, it would appear that my regulator might have crept up a little bit. Um, I fired a couple of blank shots off because uh, on the um, regulator gauge it was showing a little bit higher than it should have been. It should have been set to about 145 bar. Pretty sure that's where I left it. Uh, but it had crept up over 150. Uh, so fired a couple of blank shots off just to see if I could get it to settle back down again and it sort of looked like it did. It took about three shots and it uh, emptied itself out and came back down. And then, um, yeah, sort of tune doesn't appear to be where I left it, which is a little bit annoying. Um, so I might do a quick spot of tuning and see if I can get it back up uh, over the 850 feet per second mark because it was, um, it's jumping around between 730 and 800 feet per second, which is rubbish. So um, I'll have to uh, get a Allen key on it and um, yeah, maybe take the reg pressure down just a smidge. Uh, and see how we go. So, point to remember um, after using the Impact X Mark II, where you can go down um, in regulator pressure without having to degas the gun, uh, you can't do that on this one. So, I'm going to have to take the bottle off um, and then wind it all the way back down to minimum uh, for the hammer spring setting and then take a couple of shots until the uh, regulator empties itself out and then I'll be able to turn it back and uh, lower my rig pressure like that so a mm, little bit annoying something to remember for you uh, early early model crown owners um, I'm pretty sure this is there, there's a few different versions of the crown and mine is uh, one of the earlier ones with the sort of regulator that's not as good as the other ones so mm, interesting thing to keep in mind alright so it didn't take too much time a um, bit of uh, fiddling around, but uh, I adjusted the regulator, uh, degassed de everything, and then brought the regulator back up to uh, 140, so about five bar lower than what I used to have it on, uh, just to hope that maybe it'll, uh, with a little bit less stress constantly on it, it will be uh, a little bit happier to stay there and might not creep as much. Uh, and then just gave the hammer spring a few more turns and uh, wound her up and basically ended up with uh, average speed of about 850 feet per second which uh, it's not the 870 that I once had um, but it's it's good enough for tonight and uh, I'll probably invest a, a little bit more time tuning it up um, maybe tomorrow or the next day if I get time after work or something and I'll try and uh, 
get it running nicely how it was before, but uh, it should be uh, should be sweet for tonight. So I'm only going to be shooting it on minimum power anyway, but it's just nice to know that it is uh, consistent and sort of shooting the way it's supposed to shoot. So yes, go down to zero now. How you doing boys? Hey, lovely day for it. What have you got on your face mate? Hey. So it is now the next day, uh, it's Sunday now. Um, yesterday afternoon didn't get time to zero the rifle or anything because I had to go and build a fence for the horses and just to move them off the nice green grass onto some dry grass because they've got some strange conditions going on where they need to be eating hay for a little while so we've shuffled them off um, and then of course once that was done well halfway through that being done it started raining so um, wonderful to see the rain again but uh, timing probably not perfect <laughs> it would have been a bit nicer if it had just happened when I was asleep but hey beggars can't be choosers so the alpacas had a good drenching, the horses had a good drenching, the lawn had a good drenching uh, and it should set us up for a, a little bit of green grass in the near future which is nice. As far as zeroing goes, uh, I sat down and uh, zeroed the rifle at 5 metres. I basically had to crank my um, elevation turret all the way to the top of its travel uh, and then between 5 and 10 metres the uh, elevation change is 5 mil so it adds up to be somewhere in the neighbourhood of about a mil per metre further back because uh, I'm only going to be taking short range shots with this. Uh, it'll be um, 10 metres and under basically and, uh, and under lights. So yeah, no, no great reason to be uh, doing long shots on cane toads. You can just walk up and whack them. So that's what we're going to do. Now we just got to wait for the sun to go down. Just for those of you who haven't watched my uh, previous rant on the cane toad uh, in Queensland, it's worth noting that uh, this is an introduced species that has horrible effects on the environment. There are hundreds and hundreds of millions of these things bouncing around and they are very poisonous and they kill a lot of native wildlife and they sort of suffocate landscapes. It's, it's not a good thing. So we want to uh, put as many of them down as we can, as humanely as we can. We don't want them to feel any pain. It's not their fault that they were introduced, but uh, they are here and they do need to be removed. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. This sort of uh, localised control measure doesn't really make a big impact on their overall numbers, but it does have a big impact on the health of your very, uh, your local environment rather. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make life a little bit easier for the animals in my immediate vicinity and uh, yeah, off we go. So the sun has gone down. Let's go and uh, get after it, eh? Very dead. Nice. Come check out the size of this thing. That's it, next to my size 11 foot. <laughs> So we saw a bunch of these little dudes out there out singing. This is the uh, Litoria Wilcoxi. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but uh, they're also known as the Eastern Stony Creek Frog or Wilcox's Frog. Uh, basically it's endemic to the uh, east coast of Australia between Ingham and Sydney. Um, and it uh, typically lives in uh, subtropical or dry forests. It has a uh, funny little thing that it does. It uh, tends to change colour around mating season. They, they go from being sort of a brownish colour to this extremely bright yellow. So interesting to see them kicking around. They're not endangered or anything. It's, it's, uh, they're, they're sort of suffering a little bit from habitat loss. Um, and there are some other diseases that they can get. But uh, for the most part, these little dudes are 
living life and living the dream so happy days obviously we're not touching them these are uh, local they're um, native to the environment around here and we're not removing anything that's native so sing on my little yellow friend Not a bad way to close out the weekend. Um, I think before I do put my crown up for sale, I'm going to um, uh, pull the regulator out and restack the washers. I've seen, a, I've actually had a few people message me and tell me to do that, which is a good idea. Um, and I'm going to see if that stops the regulator creep. Apparently, it normally does. So um, we'll uh, probably make one more video with the crown um, after this one, showing that process. Uh, and hopefully, I don't do it wrong have to order a new regulator or anything like that but uh, we'll uh, hopefully get that done and uh, put it up for sale and use the proceeds to uh, fund my little project car so that'll be a good time a good little rig to go and fang around in the bush but uh, got a bag full of toads um, it's all all done and dusted all, all in the wheelie bin send it off to the landfill where they belong um, and yeah happy days so thanks for watching and I'll uh, catch you in the next one cheers